The kosher consumer is often bewildered by store-bought chicken that is found to be bruised, bloody, or has broken bones. By familiarizing yourself with some common scenarios, you will be better prepared to determine if such a chicken is kosher, treif, or questionable. This presentation is divided into four parts. In the introduction, Rabbi Moshe Heinemann, Rabbinic Administrator of the Star K, will discuss general rules about kosher chickens. Then Rabbi Heinemann will address some of the shilas regarding the thigh and drumstick and the wing, the two most problem-prone parts of the chicken. This discussion will be followed by a summary of the halachas we have learned. As we all know, the Torah only permits certain birds that we're allowed to eat. Those that we are allowed to, as the um, a chicken pigeons, geese and ducks, we can only eat those that we have a masaira, a tradition that they are a kosher type of chicken. Chickens come with, some of them have f feathers on their feet all the way down to the place where the toes are spread out. We don't have a kabbal on that type of a chicken that is kosher. We have bald-headed uh, chickens. We don't have a masaira on that type of chicken either. So we can only eat those chickens and turkeys and uh, ducks, geese, and pigeons on which there's a masaira. I remember I was once by a shaykhet and someone brought in six geese. Five of them, he said, are kosher. The sixth one, is, he said, I have no masaira on this. I asked him, what's the difference between the sixth one and the other five? He said, take a look at the shape of the head. This one, th the head of the sixth one is shaped different than the rest of them. We didn't have this kind of a, of a goose in uh, Europe, so I don't know if I can check it. The farmer insisted that all six geese were from one mother, laid six eggs, and, but the shach said, we have no carbola on it, and I will not check it. So we have these uh, chickens, but you have to, even after it's, it's a kosher bird, it has to go through a ritual slaughter, through shechita, in order to be kosher. By the time the bird gets to the supermarket, it's already after the shechita. So if there are any questions about the shechita, they've been decided already before the housewife ever gets in touch with this bird. Not only that, but even after the shechita, where it is done properly, the birds have to be inspected to make sure that there are no defects in it which would render it trefa. If it doesn't have a proper shechita, it's a novella. If it is, has a proper shechita and there's something wrong with the bird, there's something torn inside it, um, or various other problems it may have, it may be trefa. Generally speaking, the birds are inspected at the slaughterhouse to make sure that they are not trefer. Once it has a kasha seal of approval, it means that they have been kosher slaughtered in a proper way and they've been checked to make sure that they're not trefer. Some th um, defects in the bird are very hard, if not impossible, to detect unless the bird is cut apart. And they are checked when the bird is still whole. So it may be possible to detect some kind of a problem which would have been overlooked because it wasn't possible to find it in the slaughterhouse. I would like to discuss today some of the problems that the housewife may find in the chicken even though the, the insides have been removed. And most of the uh, tray for questions would be on the insides which have already been inspected. One of the trefers that we have to deal with is the trefers of broken bones. 
It is especially prevalent in the pulka bone. The pulka is the leg of the chicken. Chickens have two legs and two wings. The animals have four legs, but the chicken only has two legs. So sometimes there, there are, the, the pulka is a set, as all meat is, are sets of muscles. Now these muscles, um, they help the bird move, to help it walk, it helps it fly. Every muscle is attached to a tendon, and the tendon pulls the um, limb to which it is attached. In the foot of the chicken, that's the part, the yellow part, which has the scales, there are no, there's no meat there. So if a, a chicken wants to move its toe, the muscle that would move the toe is in the pulka. And from that pulka, there's a string which goes from this pulka bone all the way down the yellow bone and attaches itself until the, to the toe to which it, it would move. The brain, of course, tells the, it tells the uh, muscle to contract and to move the toe. And so it is with all the limbs of a chicken or an animal, it's all the same concept. Now, there are actually 16 strings that are con um, in one place at the bottom of the pulka. Now, so this is a pulka. Round here, this place over here, there are 16 strings. If any one of those 16 strings have been severed while the bird was alive, it is trefa. Let me see if I can show you the strings that I was talking about. Okay, at the end of the muscles, here's some of the strings that come out from the end of the muscles. They're actually 16 all together. If any one of those 16 strings have been severed while the bird was alive, it is trefer. Now usually, if that would happen, that one of these tendons would be severed, there would be some sign on the outside. If the, bro the bone is broken, like in this case, this is the bone, but it is, it is broken. It may have severed one of the 16 strings that connect around the, um, near the bottom of the pulka. Now, we are not so efficient in detecting the, whether these strings are broken or not. Um, and so therefore, we don't rely on expertise. Whenever we find that there's a problem at this part of the chicken, around here, in the bottom half of the pulka bone, we automatically would make it trafe if there is significant evidence that it happened while the bird was alive. If it happened after the bird was dead, of course, it can become trafe after it's dead. So over here we have a chicken which is full of blood, this pulka, and the bone is broken. There's a sharp edge right over here, which could easily have severed um, one of the 16 um, strings which go through this pulka into the yellow pine. So this, this bone, if it would have happened while it was alive, it would have made a trafe. And when, the, the, when this part is trafe, the whole chicken is trafe. The tops also. The other, the other pulka is also trafe. Now when the chickens are packaged, they uh, take all the, they, uh, they have a machine that cuts the tops and the bottoms in half. And, or they do it by hand, but most of the places have a machine. The tops are put into one bin, the bottoms are put into another bin. When they package the chicken, they take out two bottoms, they take out two tops if they want to give you a whole chicken. And they package it, they may throw in a neck. Um, so you think you have a whole chicken. But it's not necessarily said that these uh, uh, bottoms and tops are all from one chicken. They just take them at random. There's no way that they can figure out which top is from which, uh, belongs to which bottom. So therefore, when you have two tops and two bottoms in a package, and one of the, the bottoms has a trafe, or even one of the tops would have a trafe, it doesn't make any difference. 
uh, you can assume that all the rest of the parts of the chicken are not from the same chicken and therefore the other parts will not be treif. Now there's certain ways how you can tell if it happened while it's alive or not. If there's just blood over there, it is it's just bloody by itself is, is not a reason to make it treif. We don't have to check it. We can't check it, as I said before, and we don't have to check it. If there's actual blood there, we are not out to eat the blood. So if you have a chicken like this, where over here you can see the coagulated blood, even though this chicken was salted and was koshered, but since uh, we see that there's blood there, the blood must be removed because the salting takes out the blood, so we assume it takes out the blood. If we see it didn't take out the blood, you have, we have to remove the blood. The fact that the, you often find this color of uh, watery, bloody, looks watery and bloody, bloody you may find, find it in the chicken or in the bag where the chicken is in, that's not a problem. It's, the Gemara says it's called the uh, meat juice. It is not considered blood once it has been salted. Now over here we have another case over here where this has a broken bone. And since this broken bone is more than halfway up, we're not worried about the tumor sagidin, but we are worried about the fact that the bone in itself is broken. If we would have evidence that was broken while it was alive, then it would be trafe mesophic. Um, if this bone is broken, there's a bone that goes across over here, if that bone is broken, um, then it is valid, if it happened during its lifetime, it's valid treif. And of course, you can't eat it, but if you could eat it, you would um, have to take out this blood because this is real blood. This foot is, uh, over here there's a joint, it goes uh, back and forth, but over here is a ball joint, right over here where I'm pointing with my finger. And this ball, ball joint makes it, the chicken, this is the pelvic bone, attached to the pelvic, the, the pelvic bone on the spine of the chicken, and it can move in very, very, various directions. Now if this ball joint gets out of place over here, as you see, this is the ball. And it, it's, it came out, if it came out during its lifetime, then the chicken, we consider it treif. This is called buka de atma de shaf miduchte as that's the way it's referred to in the Gemara. So with all this blood around over here, um, which probably came because it came out during its lifetime, it's out now, uh, we assume that it probably happened while it was alive, and therefore this chicken would be considered treif. Okay, it has no problem with the foot. The foot is a regular foot. Very often it is, um, very often it is pinkish around over here, but that's normal for a chicken. It didn't grow that way, but when they hang it up, um, right after they shecht it, it uh, very often gets pink. So that's, that's no reason for concern. It's only if it's a dark red where you see that there's actually, um, there's actual coagulated blood over there that there's a problem. Okay, this is another example of a buka datna de shofni That's the, the ball joint I'm going to show it to you so you can see how it's here. It is the way it is normally inside the chicken. But what happened over here was that it came out like that, and if it, with all this blood around it, it seems that it came out while it was alive, um, then the chicken would be treif. Over here we have a chicken which is all green over here. This gangrene has already set in on this chicken while it was alive. It doesn't get green after it's dead. So therefore, since it, there is a reason for us to believe that this was um, banged into and hurt, while it was alive, we would have to make it treif. I actually can feel over here inside there's a piece of bone broken off. Here's another case of a gangrene foot. Um, it actually is not broken. There's no broken bone over here. But if you, um, there's blood over here that has to be removed. And evidently this went through some trauma over here. This. Uh, um, I can feel the bone is intact, it didn't break and, re and uh, reconnect. But um, when you see all of this, you'd make it um, trait because it's not usual to find this in a, in a healthy chicken. Very often you can find a chicken that has this, these brown things left in the chicken. They are the kidneys of this, of this chicken. 
they are actually in an alcove in the bone. There's one on one side and one on the other side. So if you have a bottom, it can only have one kidney. You will not have both of them in it. If you find them in the chicken, you should make sure to take them out before you cook the chicken. If you didn't take them out before, the chicken will still be kosher. The wing consists of three sections, the wingtip, the middle set of two bones, and the upper bone that connects directly to the body. This wing over here is made out of three parts. There's the very end, which in some places they, they cut off. Even though that if halacha wise not required, somebody just cut off the, the very end of it, the tip of it, so the blood should be able to come out better during the salting. Um, then there's this bone, the second bone, which are actually two bones, and then there's one bone over here in, in this part. In this part, if both bones are broken, it, even if both bones are broken, it is, it is not treif. However, even though they're not treif, the custom is to cut off the part that is past the break because it looks like it's been separated during its lifetime and it would be like Eva Menachai. So you just cut it off over here at the place where it was broken. This is thrown out and the rest of it is and the rest of it is kosher. Now if that's all if it happened while it was alive, again it would be full of blood. If it has happened after it died, there'll be no problem. If there's no blood, we assume it happened afterwards. Even on this part, this very last part, if it is broken, you cut off the part that has been broken, if it seems to have happened during its lifetime. And if it's on the second part, it's the same thing. Now, this last bone, the bone which is attached to the body, there are different questions. If it's detached, this whole bone is not, um, it seems to be uh, just hanging. That, if it happened during its lifetime, it would make the chicken trafe. The, uh, as I said again, that it would have to be bloody, it would probably be swollen, or green, that it's uh, gangrene has already uh, set in, or mold, then we have a question. If, if later, it, uh, if it happened later as it does, the workers go and they take the chicken and they throw it like this, um, and it, it would snap over here, it is not, um, if, it's, once the chicken is not alive anymore, there are no problems. It cannot be come tray fat as that. Now here we have a bruise over here. Now this bruise, actually, um, if there is no co uh, coagulated blood in it, there'll be no problem. And um, there's something like this. Does I can see from the outside that has calculated blood in it. As a matter of fact, here I'm going to squeeze some of the blood out. So the um, that really should be removed. Over here, we have a problem over here with this. Uh, over here, it's swollen. It looks like it's swollen. And the question is, does this make a problem? Now, actually. This wing happens to be attached in the normal way to the body. So when I said before that if it's detached, that it's a problem, that problem doesn't exist over here. We have something over here which we're going to look into to see what, why, is this ha why, why is this happening. So everything underneath the skin looks pretty normal. The bone is not broken. The bone feels intact. And so therefore, um, it, would, it, would, uh, it would be kosher. It would be considered kosher. When you open it up, you see that there's actually a piece of blood in here. 
if this happens, you'd have to cut away all this part that has the blood in it, or go and ask a rubber shiler. I said there's more paste over here, or there's um, just to make sure that um, it, it's been done right. Okay, here we have a question. Um, there's a lot of blood over here. I don't think even the inspector would have let this go through. They'd probably make you cut it off. But from a halacha perspective, this is blood, and um, it's very, it's, there's actually blood in here, and it's very difficult to clean this out. We just have to cut it off. This goes all the way, this, there's blood all over, over here, all the way. There's blood all the way, uh, looks like there's blood inside, and uh, so you just have to cut this whole thing off. But since all the bones are intact, it is, it is kosher. Let's sum up the halachas we have learned. In the drumstick, if the bottom half of the bone is broken and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. If the top half of the bone is broken and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, it is possibly not kosher and should not be used. A rub should always be consulted to make these determinations and one should speak to their rub if the chicken was accidentally used. The thigh. If the bone is broken and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. If the thigh bone was dislocated from the pelvic bone and there is reason to believe the dislocation occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. If a kidney or part of a kidney is found in the chicken, it should be removed before the chicken is cooked. If it was not removed, the chicken is still kosher. Blood. Blood must always be removed and may not be eaten. The wing. A break in the outer two sets of bones does not make the chicken trafe. However, if there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, the wing must be cut at the break and that piece must be discarded. If the inner bone is broken and there is reason to believe the break occurred while the chicken was alive, a rub should be consulted. If the inner bone was dislocated from the chicken's body and there is reason to believe the dislocation occurred while the chicken was alive, the chicken is not kosher. Blood must always be removed and may not be eaten. Sometimes it is impractical to remove the blood from the wing, in which case one should remove those parts of the wing that are bloody. In a package of pre-cut chicken, each piece is judged independently. If one piece is not kosher, the others still may be used. When one brings a chicken to their rov for a shila, they should not cut the piece or remove the skin. It should be brought as it was found, as this may affect the outcome of the shila.